Howdy, my friends. It's great to talk to you today. I'm going to, well, first of all, I got on a sweatshirt. And I'm sorry, but it's cold today, okay? So I'm wearing my sweatshirt because I like it and because it keeps me warm. You know, I want to share a bit more about my transformation journey in the next mm, several months because there's a lot to it. And I feel like many of you follow me for this specific reason. And so I want to share with you as much as I can about the journey and also about inner healing along the way. Because without that, I wouldn't be where I am today. So 11 years ago, I weighed 430 pounds. Now, Let's be honest, that's really, really large, especially for a woman who is five foot, five inches tall. So I've lost 250 pounds, and of course, I feel a whole lot better. However, to me, the more important thing is not necessarily the amount of weight I've lost, but the lifestyle change that starts on the inside that I've gone through. And then the slow, steady weight loss. Now, quick fixes are a big deal these days with weight loss. You know, it used to be um, surgeries and all that kind of thing. Then it used to be pills and those kind of things. Now it's shots. And, you know, no matter what the quick fix is, it doesn't work to keep the weight loss off. We must change our habits. Now, a lot of people say, well, that gives you time to change your habits. It usually doesn't. So changing our habits, it's not easy, but it is worth it. The only way to change our habits, though, is to realize this. Overeating is sin. It becomes an addiction. An addiction is a stronghold, and strongholds lead to sin. If we want to do what God wants us to do, we must, we must listen to him and do what he, he says. Romans 12, 2 in the message states it really plainly. Fix your attention on God you'll be changed from the inside out. That is, if you really have your attention fixed on God and what he wants. The inside of us needs to be transformed, changed, and renewed. The Amplified says it this way, do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. Focusing, renewing of your mind, did you hear that? Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. So that's Romans 12 too in the Amplified. You know, most of us who are overweight will try to fix the outside first. We want to look better, so we want to fix that first. But what happened to our bodies or the outside of us is a direct result of what is going on inside of us. By the inside, I mean our spirits and souls, our emotions, our, our minds, our wills, our desires, and the spiritual part of us. Fix the inside and the outside will come in line. So, I know what I'm talking about because I did once weigh 430 pounds. I wanted what I wanted and I couldn't make myself 
change until I focused completely on what God wanted me to do. I had to focus on that rather than what I wanted to eat. In the past, my way of coping was to diet and then lose weight. And then I'd reward myself with something sweet. And that would start me back on the track of gaining weight back plus more. This is the way, my friends, to gain up to 430 pounds or more. One step for forward, 49 steps backwards. It, it's a frustrating way to live. Now, I've gone through this total metamorphosis or transformation from the inside out. It's a change which couldn't have happened unless I addressed the root issues holding me back. Today I'm living in victory and it's such a great feeling, mainly because God has shown me how to deal with negative emotions, issues from childhood, difficulties I've gone through, trauma that kept me stuck, and so much more. We all have some of these kinds of things in our past, and some things affect us more than other things. And some small things can affect us greatly, or bigger things we might be able to go through fine. Allowing God to uncover the issues that have us stuck and forgive any individuals involved in that and get those issues out of our minds and help us deal with them and allow God to lead us and set us free helps us not feel like we need to run to addictions to comfort ourselves. We will finally allow God to be our protector, comforter, and companion. So overcoming these kinds of emotional barriers has been a major key for me on my transformation journey. I find God is always there to provide his tools, truths, and leadership to help us heal emotions which have held us back for years. Now, I'm not a counselor or an expert in any of this. However, I've become pretty good at listening to God and following his leadership towards my total help. One thing I know for sure, if God hadn't led me to deal with issues in my past to confront those issues, I would still be gaining weight instead of losing. The many I work with don't want to confront those issues. They want to continue to hold on to them so they can be a victim. God has all the answers to our problems, every one of them. My issue, though, was how do I access him to help me lose weight? My thought process was, I'm the one who got myself into this mess, so I need to get myself out. And of course, then I'm comforting myself because I'm in a mess, and then I want to eat more, right? So I just, I couldn't figure out how to stop doing this. And I finally realized God doesn't really want to hear me recount my problems over and over again. He wants to teach me how to deal with them and rely on his wisdom and strength in the process. He will show us, but we have to do what he tells us to do. Our problems should lead us straight to his throne room to listen to and learn from him, not to order him to do our bidding and what we think he should do for us. 
Obviously, all my self-effort had led to failure, especially in the area of keeping the weight off. I kept telling God just to make me not love sugar. Fix me. Fix this inside of me so I'm not going to sugar all the time. That, of course, never worked for me to pray that prayer. And it wasn't the answer. However, as I was thinking about this, what I was going to share with you, it's so interesting that now my cravings for desserts and things made with sugar and flour are non-existent. And then a lot of people say, how can that be? God showed me how to surrender what I thought I wanted for what he wanted to give me in exchange. It's not something I can even explain because, friends, I used to be the biggest sugar addict there ever was. I couldn't go an hour without eating something sweet. I had candy in my desk all the time, and I would just continually eat it. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit set me free from those things that were killing me. In the past, you know, when I would walk into any room or any gathering, public gathering, I'd look around, especially church, I'd look around to see if there was at least one person bigger than me there. And if so, I felt okay to stay. If not, I'd cower towards the back and leave as quickly as possible. I was fat and was sure no one liked fat chicks. Today, I no longer see myself as fat or call myself fat. I see myself as normal. And many think if they lose weight, they will automatically step into that place of feeling normal and all will be well with the world. Well, it's not that simple because being overweight or fat is more of a state of mind than it is the amount of weight you weigh. I saw myself as fat for 55 years at least. It's not easy to see myself differently. However, it does help that I have people in my life who remind me of who I am today and encourage me on my journey. A couple of years ago, my husband took a picture of me with at a conference with a woman I had always thought of as small. When he showed me the picture, I said, I... I look the same size as she does. Is it the camera angle or what? I've always seen her as small. And he said, well, you have to realize you are small now. Then he gave me a hug and a smile. It took a while to sink in. I am small now? Well, actually, it's more like medium, but but don't tell him. <laughs> Okay, don't tell him. God is in the process, though, of restoring my thoughts and my feelings about myself, piece by piece. I used to shy away from hugging people for fear they'd think my fat was contagious. I kept people at arm's length. These days, I'm hugging more freely. Now I give all of me. I'm still me, just a better version of me, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Through the years, I've taken tons of tests, you know, those tests that are designed to help you get to know yourself better, who you are and all that. But did you know that as an adult, your personality and there are a lot of personality tests, but your personality is not supposed to change. 
But I've been taking these tests all along and I was surprised to find that after I lost weight, my personality changed. I now test as an extrovert rather than an introvert. Though I still like my alone time to kind of fuel the writer in me, I also love interacting with people. I realized too that the reason I love putting words on paper is to help others. So in all ways, I have become people focused rather than inward focused. On another test, I rate as a risk taker rather than one who maintains the status quo, which was always what how I saw myself before. But and in spiritual gifts and mercy and compassion and encouragement, those are all high on my list. And they used to be non-existent in, in me. I wasn't a compassionate person. I was a get it done person. Now I'm a blend of both. I'm still getting things done, but I'm stepping out into the unknown. I'm not just going on the safe journey. And when I jump in faith, I do believe God will catch me in his arms of grace. It's a great feeling of freedom in Christ. I also like jumping barriers, barriers that had previously prevented me from losing weight and keeping it off. Most of them are behind me now, a string as far as the eye can see. However, as I continue to walk this journey, I find more barriers that I need to get through. It's all right, though, because I've learned how to get beyond the barriers and walls, many of which I erected myself through the years to protect me, or so I thought. These barriers in my life caused me to run to food for comfort. I also allowed those same foods to become strongholds and take control of my life. You know, others seek comfort in activities like taking drugs, drinking alcohol, viewing pornography, having affairs, gambling, smoking, lying, gossiping, shopping, overworking, enabling others in codependent relationships, and the list goes on. My addiction was simply food and especially foods made with sugar. But if you're caught in a, in a different addictive cycle, you will be able to see yourself in what I'm talking about. My prayer is for anyone in any struggle, especially an addictive struggle, to be able to identify the barriers that you have erected and learn how to walk in freedom with God's help. God set me free when I shut the door to the things which had become strongholds to me, the things I was allowing to take control of my life. Strongholds, as you know, are perpetuated by the evil one, the thief. John 10.10 in the Amplified, Jesus tells us, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I come, Jesus comes, that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. The evil one wants us to run to food instead of God. In the end, though, it is always our choice. When we choose, we can close the door on strongholds. 
This choice is only possible with God's help and only when we admit our weaknesses to him. 2 Corinthians 12, 10, in the Amplified, again, a favorite verse of mine, when I am weak in my human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. We need his strength to get through what we're trying to do to follow him, especially where our addictive kind of issues are. So, like I said, I no longer see myself as the biggest woman in any room because I've been set free of these kinds of comparisons, whether they're real or contrived, whether it's ridicule, self-imposed shame, and so much more. Today, I'm choosing to see myself as normal and just saying those words gives me pleasure beyond any other on earth. Now, there are some basic actions I've learned to employ to work with God to bring about my freedom. And I'll be talking about these on future podcasts. But just to start with, here are some, here are some of the issues we'll be talking about. Communicate. Learn how to listen and communicate with God. This is going to be one of your best tools in your toolbox. Forgive. Learn to forgive others, whether they meant to hurt you or not. Realize. Realize as a child that we didn't have the ability to accurately perceive situations that happen to us. And some of these situations are the roots of our current issues. Number four is emotions. Understand that the emotions we have attached to situations as a child are likely still governing our behaviors today. Even though we've rationally thought through them, we may, we may have allowed them to become strongholds or emotional barriers in our lives that are holding us back from going forward. Number five is barriers. God wants to show us how to tear down emotional barriers by uncovering their source and learning how to overcome them with God's help. We don't have to be afraid to address these difficult issues because God is right there. He's ready and willing to help us. Number six is surrender. I know people don't like that word, but surrendering completely to God is the key to accessing his grace power in every area of our lives, even weight loss. Number seven, God is God. He wants to be master and Lord of our lives. He doesn't want negative or untrue emotions to be in charge. He and he alone must be Lord of our lives and the master over even the foods we eat. Employing these actions helped lead me to where I no longer want to indulge in what I thought I couldn't live without for years. Today, my cravings are pretty much non-existent. If they try to raise their heads again, I know how to stop them. Now, I want to give you hope. Freedom from the yo-yo syndrome of losing and regaining weight over and over again is possible. We just need to fix our attention on God every day, all day. He won't get tired of helping us. He delights in doing that. 
He's on our side. Second Chronicles 20, 15 in the Living Bible says, don't be afraid. Don't be paralyzed by this mighty army for the battle is yours. This is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours. It's God's. I'm so glad that he is on my side and he is with you as well. He's fighting for us, even in this battle we're having with food right now. I've always known how to lose weight. You probably do too. Eat less, move more, right? The difference is now I know how to recognize the barriers that I have formed to, to not lose weight. And I know how to overcome them, those barriers with God's help. So using the methods and tools I've learned have helped me understand how to keep the weight from returning. Losing weight is good. Keeping it off is awesome. Being close to God, though, that is truly where the sweetest of freedoms can be found. Now, lest you think surrendering sugar and flour and losing over 250 pounds has been easy, it hasn't. When I wrote my first book, Sweet Grace, my daughter wrote the final note, and I think part of it says, says sums up my journey pretty well. She said, I've watched you battle your demons for years. Those words stuck with me. It was interesting to me that even though we'd never talked specifically about that, she saw my weight loss journey like I did as a direct attack of the enemy. And when I read that, I wondered, what will she remember from my battles? Probably the times I gave in to foods and maybe some of the times I resisted. She'll remember the struggles I had with various diets. She'll remember it was difficult for me to walk into her junior high school and down the steps to the gym to support her at her band concert. She and my son will also remember that I finally did learn to resist a lot of those foods. She'll remember the times when we went shopping at the mall and had a great time walking and buying clothes. But through all of the battles I face, I've learned I do have an enemy. I've also learned, though, that he's not the overriding power I saw him as for years. He only has power if I give it to him. If I am unwilling to confront the issues which drag me down, I empower the evil one to continue to control me. My friends, we must fight him. He is not the boss. We are the bosses of our lives, and we can choose to put Jesus in charge instead of ourselves or the devil. I allowed the evil one to be the master puppeteer of my life for way too many years. He pulled the strings and I danced to his tune by picking up another candy bar. For others, it might be a bottle of alcohol or some type of drug. Doesn't really matter what it is all the time. Every day, there is a kind, gracious, compassionate, omnipotent God who loves us so much, he lets us choose him 
as Joshua 24, 15 tells us. This is who our God is. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. That's Psalm 36, 7. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Psalm 103, 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Psalm 111, 4. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And that's Revolution, Revelations 19.6. The choice to love God is easier than any choice we can make. He is perfect. He is a God we can trust. He is a God who keeps his promises. He is the God who sent his only son that we might have life and live in freedom. John 8, 36 tells us, if the son makes you free, then you are unquestionably free. And what I love about God is that freedom is always our choice. He never legislates it. He says, choose me and my ways. And if you do, you will have and enjoy life and have it in abundance until it overflows. God is always with us, always point us, pointing us in the right direction. He loves us so much. Ephesians 3.20 tells us, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Yes, I battled my demons for years. However, it was only when I stopped fighting and allowed God to take over that real victory came. It will not happen without his help and strength. My prayer is that what my daughter, son, those in my Overcomers Academy, those reading my books, those listening to this podcast, and anyone watching my life will remember, and that's to resist the devil. Listen to God. Surrender completely to the one who loves you so much. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I love you, but I know I'm not listening to you and not following you. I'm hiding behind barriers. I'm afraid to come out and face the world because of what's happened to me in the past. I want to self-protect. I do that a lot by overeating and making myself larger. Jesus, I want to trust you and you alone. Help me surrender completely to you. In your name I pray, amen. Friends, I know how to do this weight loss journey by hanging on tightly to Jesus. And let me teach you how to do that as well. In Overcomers Academy, we have over two years of courses and more being added all the time. We have a weekly call where I do inner healing and I answer your questions. And in the app, the circle app that we use, we have spaces where you can ask any question you want. And I promise I or someone will answer you. Friends, God called me to coach you. So join me by going to TeresaShieldsParker.com backslash overcomers. I'll see you in the group. Until next week, 
sweet grace for your journey.